This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service that screens a variety of interesting and amazing films from around the world. Get a free month at mubi.com slash indepthcine. In this series, I go behind the scenes and look at some of the different crew positions on movie sets and what each of these jobs entails. Since the camera department is what I'm most familiar with, having worked as a camera assistant in the film industry myself for years, I'll break down the role of the first AC or focus puller to uncover what they do, their average day on set, and some tips which they use to elevate their game. A focus puller or first assistant camera are responsible for maintaining the camera lens's optical focus by manipulating the focus gear on the barrel of the lens. Cinema lenses come with distance markings which are usually displayed in feet and inches, but sometimes also in metric units depending on the country. Pulling focus is the act of using these distance measurements to manipulate the focus distance on a lens so that they align with the distance between the subject and the camera's focal plane or sensor. For example, if an actor is 6 feet away from the focal plane and the first AC sets the lens to 6 feet, then the actor will be sharp and in focus. Focus can also be determined by referring to sharpness on a monitor using the eye. Usually the focus will shift during a shot, for example when an actor moves closer towards the camera, or if the camera moves closer towards its subject. It is the job of the first to time the focus pull so that the distance of the focus is always correct throughout the movement. In most cases, cinematographers will handpick their first AC based on their track record, prior relationship or a recommendation from a trusted source. The technical act of capturing the image lies largely in their hands, so DPs are careful about their selection. Contrary to what the name may suggest, pulling focus is far from being the only job that the focus puller performs. Some other responsibilities include building the camera and configuring it depending on how it will be rigged, troubleshooting any technical camera glitches, setting the exposure which is dictated by the cinematographer, changing lenses, providing technical advice about camera gear to the DP, and being responsible for the overall running of the camera. Although focus pulling is largely a technical pursuit, it does require an artistic eye or emotional sensitivity to the story. They choose, literally, where to direct the focus of the audience's eye, anchoring their attention to a particular part of the frame. Often the focus is on the actor, but not always. Who should be focused on in a two shot featuring two cast members? Should the focus change or rack between them? Do we stay on one of them the whole time? When should the focus shift? These are all decisions usually made instinctively by the first, sometimes with feedback or suggestions from the DP between takes. The first thing that many non-film people ask when the role of the focus puller is explained is, why not just use autofocus? My smartphone can do it, why can't a tremendously expensive cinema camera do it? There are several reasons. First. Autofocus can't read human emotion or nuance. An autofocus motor will set focus based on what is told by software. This thing is in the middle, focus on that. However, as mentioned, sometimes the language of cinema will require focus to drift or sharpen or defocus unconventional parts of the image for artistic effect. People can make reactive, creative decisions about focus better than software can. Second, autofocus is not always smooth. Over the years, audiences have become familiar with the more organic way that focus pullers change the focus using a human touch. Autofocus can sometimes feel overly jerky, too quick and precise, or laggy. Although new technology in this field like the Preston Light Ranger 2 is rapidly advancing the capabilities of autofocus. Third, it's faster. Rather than having to program a specific area in the frame for the focus to hit or struggle with any technical glitches, firsts can do it instantly. And finally, this way of working has been established as the industry standard over decades. High-end cinema cameras, accessories, and even how shoots are managed and structured, such as having a rehearsal before shooting, is with focus pullers in mind.
Before the day of the shoot, a focus puller does a gear check. They will get a list of camera gear which the cinematographer has requested including lenses, the camera and accessories. During the gear check they will assemble the camera, shoot lens tests using a chart and determine that all the gear that they have is functioning normally. If there are any issues with the gear they will consult with members of the rental house to fix it or source a replacement. During the gear check they will consult with other crew members on the shoot such as the DIT, VT, sound recordist and grip to ensure that their gear works properly together with the camera build. For example if there is a crane shot that the grip has planned then the first may need to source an extended power cable or build the camera with an extra iris motor to alter exposure remotely. Once this is done they will mark up lenses. This is a process where the distance markings on the lens are synced by the programming or manually transcribing the distances onto the focus rings which they will be using. There are two kinds of follow focus systems which can be used, a traditional follow focus or a wireless follow focus. Both use similar principles but a wireless follow focus has become the standard preference nowadays. The focus puller mounts the follow focus or wireless motors onto camera rods positioned under or above the lens. The follow focus gears or motor gears are aligned with the gear teeth on the cinema lens. The follow focus is then turned either physically or using wireless motors and a handset to change the focus distance on the lens. For each lens the distance marking should match the markings on the focus ring so that as the first turns the ring the distance on the ring matches the focus distance on the lens. If you are really working with no budget have a super old school cinema lens or a stills lens without a focus gear or don't have time to attach and calibrate a follow focus the focus can also be adjusted by directly turning the barrel of the lens. The two industry standard wireless follow focus brands are Preston and Ari but other brands such as RT Motion or Tilter can also be used. On the day of shooting the focus puller will chat with the DP about what configuration the camera is needed in for the first setup and what focal length they would like to start on. They will then assemble the camera, put on a lens and a matte box and any necessary filters. If working wirelessly they will build their focus setup which will include a wireless handset, a monitor and a receiver which will get fed a live wireless image transmitted from the camera. The camera will then be placed on a rig such as a dolly or handed over to the grips for more complex rigging or handheld work. The first shot is lined up. The cinematographer will then work out what exposure they want and communicate that to the first. There are different ways of doing this, for example the DP may ask for a shooting stop such as T2 and then expect the focus puller to add or subtract the adequate ND filtration to achieve that stop throughout. The cinematographer may ask them to change exposure by adjusting digital camera settings such as EI. Or if working on film, the DP may use their light meter to measure the amount of light such as T11 at 250 ASA and then expect the focus puller to calculate the correct amount of ND filters to add so that the lens may be shot wide open. Once a shot has been lined up and everything is in place, the first assistant director will call for a rehearsal. The focus puller will use this time to practice and make any marks that they need to, usually coordinating with the actor's marks that the second AC will put down. For example they may see that the actor starts the shot at 10 feet from the camera and ends the shot at 5 feet. They then know what distance to start at and what distance to end on and can concentrate on getting the timing in the middle right as they roll the focus from 10 feet to 5 feet in time with the actor's movement. This is the traditional way of preparing for a focus pull. It was very necessary to work off distance marks when ACs were working on 35mm film before the assistance of an HD monitor feed as they had no optical reference to see if they were sharp and had to judge focus distance purely by eye. As you can imagine this is an extremely difficult skill that took years of training and practice to master. Now with HD and even 4K digital video feeds, focus pullers have the option to either focus purely from looking at an image on a monitor, use a combination of judging distance, using marks and going off a monitor or rarely pull focus completely old school without a monitor. 
film tended to be slightly more forgiving than digital. This is because DPs working on film would usually give focus pullers a workable stop, for example T4, instead of shooting wide open at T1.3. So, for example, if you are out by 6 inches on the focus on 35mm, it may look sharp enough. However, because of the high resolution of digital cinema cameras and the precise modern optics they are paired with, if the focus is not completely on point, it will probably look soft. This makes using a monitor to judge or check focus an important tool in the digital AC's arsenal. Nowadays, because of digital cameras not requiring expensive film stock for each take, rehearsals are becoming increasingly rare and the first AD may ask to just shoot one and see what happens without a rehearsal. When roll camera is announced, roll camera. the first AC will roll. Rolling. If there's sync sound, they will pull focus to the clapperboard and then back to the actor or subject once it's been clapped, ready to pull focus for the scene. As they play out the scene, the blocking may change or the actor may miss their mark or improvise. It's the first AC's duty to be able to adjust their pulling accordingly. After completing a shot, the focus puller may be asked to change the lens, filter or rebuild the camera for a different configuration such as a steady cam shot. When shooting on film, the focus puller is also required to change and lace the new magazine. They'll check the film gate before moving on to a new shot to check that there isn't any dirt or dust which would ruin the take. The cliché of the grumpy focus puller may have a grain of truth to it. This comes from it being a very stressful job on set. If a high enough percentage of their pulling is out of focus, their performance isn't up to scratch or if the negative itself gets scratched, they stand the risk of getting fired. So let's go over some tips to avoid that from happening. Every focus puller should know how to use marks and judge distance. An old trick is to carry a tape measure around with you, continually calculate distances in your head, then take out the tape to measure and see if you're correct. Taking marks is a great way of laying a foundation so that you know where you stand. One way is to use start and end marks as mentioned, another is to use physical marks on set for in-between distances. For example, if an actor walks up to a table halfway through a shot, the focus puller will measure the distance from the camera to the edge of the table so that they have an in-between point. These marks can either be mentally noted, physically marked on the focus ring with a marker or with what are known as arrows, pointed markers cut out of gaffer tape, or marked using different finger positions on the focus ring. The only time focus pullers might set the lens to a different distance mark is when they split the focus. This is when they are required to keep two objects sharp, which are different distances from the lens. In this case, the focus is set to the distance in between the two objects, until a middle ground is found where they are both sharp. Always test to make sure everything is working properly and you are happy with your camera build before lining up a shot. No offense to the assistant directors out there, but when they say, just bring out the camera so we can have a look and you can build it later, they rarely mean it. Since camera technicians are dealing with electronics and software, which have a tendency to bug out from time to time, they need to be good at solving technical issues very quickly. When troubleshooting, always be methodical. For example, if a monitor isn't working, first check the battery, then try a new SDI cable, then go to the menu to make sure the camera is outputting a feed, or recycle the transmitter. Following steps logically and calmly, will solve the problem as quickly as possible. The job is largely psychological. You have to always be confident and calm. The more you begin to panic, the worse and less accurate your pulling will get. It also helps to know what variables will make your job more difficult or easier and what tools you need to assist you. Longer focal lengths, shooting the lens wide open, focusing on objects very close to the lens, or using large format cameras will make the depth of field more shallow. So if the DP decides to use a 150mm lens at T2 with the actor running straight at the camera, you need to control the situation because getting pin sharp focus will be extremely difficult. For example, you could ask the AD for a moment to take marks. 
you could use a focus bug for a distance indication, or you could kindly ask the DP if they could stop down a bit to increase the depth of field. A final way to make life easier is to be surrounded by a strong team. Having a competent second AC that ensures the camera is always running, gears well organized, reloads happen smoothly, actors are always marked, and the clapperboard is always put in the correct place, will decrease your workload and allow you to focus on the most important part of your job, the focus. This video was brought to you thanks to Mubi. Mubi is a curated streaming service where you can watch beautiful, interesting cinema, something I'm sure that all of you subscribed love doing. The reason I like Mubi is that they open the door to finding interesting films I'm not familiar with that aren't always available on other streaming sites in an easy, accessible way. The curators hand select each film that's streamed and premiere a new movie every day, which makes it feel kind of like you're attending a film festival from the comfort of your couch. For example, Mubi recently introduced me to the Korean film Moving On, a beautiful portrait about a family going through a transition phase by filmmaker Yoon Dan Bi. There are also more well-known festival favorites streaming at the moment, like the fantastic documentary The Wolf Pack, which won the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance. So if you're into cinema like I am, then I highly recommend checking out Mubi. You can try Mubi free for 30 days at mubi.com slash indepcine. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash indepcine for a whole month of great cinema for free. Thanks everyone for getting to the end of the video. If there are any ACs down there in the comments that want to share any tips or stories, that'd be great. Or if you have any suggestions about other crew members for this series, please let me know down below. Until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.